Uppercut, uppercut, Sonic Boom! Well, hello there, humans. Have you other things? Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it to. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bushkin. Today we're going to be doing a Blitz boot camp. Getting back to Blitz basics. Uh, this is something that so many people have talked about in the comments section because they are sick and tired of people not knowing the simple stuff with tanks like resetting camo and uh, some of the things we're going to talk about here anyway and I'm going to run you through and this is going to be a uh, series we might do one a week see how it goes if it's well received we'll run it and uh, you can just point this out to the people in game who don't know what they're doing and really really need help not that there aren't already wonderful YouTubers out there who know what they're doing and already doing this stuff but baby if I'm not making content who even am I? Uh, number one have a look at this T62A uh, we're just going to farm him up and we're going to do it by hitting his drive wheel. Now that's one thing, but look at the angle I'm taking just behind this rock. I'm getting my gun never further forward than I absolutely have to get it to get the shot out. So this is called making good trades. Number one in the whole Blitz universe is make good trades. A good trade is a trade where you don't take back damage and you give damage. Uh, sometimes it's a trade where you take back one shot and you give two shots, like to clear a tank. If someone's on 300 hit points and you have a 350 alpha gun, but you're going to have to take a shot to take them, then that's a decision where you take one shot to get one kill. It's not always a good trade. If you've got like five tanks to kill and you've got to take a shot to kill a tank and it's going to take half your hit points, yeah, it's probably not a good trade to do. You've got to wait. And even if it means you don't get the kill, you still just do your best. So we're going to work on that again. I did not think I was going to be spotted here. And then I was like, uh, I'll just hold. And then I was like, oh, that's a shit trade. And that right there is an example of a bad trade. That's like a bad trade. You'll also note that I'm cycling between AP and premium AP here. That's because the premium AP on the STB-1 is pretty unique in that you give next to no damage up for it. It's a very, very small damage loss for a huge increase in penetration. Know what your actual penetration numbers are and whether it's worth running promo on the tank. And look at this. Exactly the same as last time. I'm going to keep him trapped. All right? And he can't get the gun down far enough to actually hit the soft underbelly of my tank. He's got to try and shoot the turret. And he's in all sorts. He knows it. He's desperate. Absolutely desperate. And we've farmed right through the back of them. And all we've done really is track two tanks and take the points. I mean, really. And then just side shot other tanks. Third partying is what you want to be doing. You always want to third party. I don't party often as they say in the uh, beer ads. But when I do, it's a third party. Um, you know the meme I'm talking about? It's ancient. It's the internet. Look deep in the law. You'll find it. And then we're into the back door. Always checking, can we pen with HE? Even though we know we're driving an STB-1 and we won't pen with HE, uh, we're still checking, are we going to pen with HE? And we're not worried at all about incoming damage because we're going to win too early. And it's probably left... A little bit on the bone there. Might have got up to six and a half K. Anyway, quick, easy mastery in the STB-1 doing four-fifths of flog all uh, to actually get it there. But we got it. M's, M's, uh, M's. Excellent work. Next thing we're going to look at is the bat chat. And this is what I showed in the live stream. For those of you who already know the answers to the test, just shut up. Let the rest of the kids work it out. Now, what we're going to look at here is the TD positions, right? I'm going to pause that, and if you look around on the right, there's three TDs, right? They're going to be up there on the right. That's where they are always up there. TDs are monotonous creatures. They lumber across the plains of Blitz, and they are very predictable. They love to go to those spots. I'm going to move here, and I'm going to try to spot tanks crossing, right? Sitting here in my little bush. Light tanks are kind of predictable too. I often will fire into this bush. Sometimes I get results, but I always... You know, always take the chance. There we go. Now, one of the TDs is one of those bastard Minotauros, which means they're crossing. They're really just going to play the heavy, heavy route. We're not firing here until we absolutely 
absolutely have to. We've picked up three spots, and when we do fire, are we... What? Seriously? We fire that, and it doesn't go in? Whatever. So, we're circling back. Rerouting. Now, have a look how many tanks there are. That crane wagon, the three on the left, plus one. There's only seven tanks in a game, but look where they all are. All the doing tanks are inside my left rail. All the not doing anything tanks, dickhead TDs, are up on the hill. So what am I going to do? I'm going to drive under the gun line where no one up there can see me, and I'm going to wait for the TDs to fire. And they will, because they're suckers. Oh, hello. He's dropped adrenaline. And then I'm going to stop. And am I going to fire? Net, net, net. Not unless I absolutely have to. Look at my assisted damage right now. Tell me that I am not winning the game for my team. 3,000. 3,737, etc., etc., etc. 3,900. I'm going to roll back here. We're going to end up with like 4K, 4.2K assisted, 4.232 assisted, 1,600 damage. And we're going to be top tank with only 1,500 damage in a tier 10 game, right? In a win. That's unheard of. You will not see that very often. And that's because I counted the tanks. Counting tanks is like counting cards at the casino. If you count the tanks, it will inform you as to what decisions you can make. Now, I am a 50-year-old dude, okay? I have not got the fast twitch motor muscles of an F1 driver. I am not that guy. But I can grind out wins against other dudes because I just count the tanks and I look at the most likely outcomes. I crunch the numbers and I go with what's going to work. There's also some simple stuff that people don't really do. Um, watch how I rotate around my heavies here and use their hit point pools. Heavies went forward. If you're a TD and you are like those other TDs and you just sit at the back, then it's probably you that's the problem. Think of it. like If you want to say that you're sick of your team dying and you're sitting at the back of the map, you are actively doing nothing to discourage them from dying. Like, you're getting fewer shots than you would if you were at the front. All that's required to move up with your TD is the ability to actually react and not just sit there in sniper mode looking at a ridgeline, hoping that someone's dumb enough to cross over. Think about it. You're literally just thinking, gee, I hope the other team is dumber than my team. When you're on the back hill of mines or dead rail or canal... And that's fine for some tanks. Like There's certain tanks where you just can't do anything else. And if you do do something else, you pay for it pretty savagely. That Conway was so happy to land that shot. Good on him. And that's my fault for leaving my ass hanging out in the wind. Now I'm literally on the line. On the front line here for my heavy. If he's gone forward, I'm providing front line fire support and doing everything I can to support him because I can. I'm in a turreted TD with mobility. A lot of these tanks, the clue is in the title. Like if you've given you a turret, if they've given you mobility, it's so you can get to shooting positions. You can be more flexible. You can get to positions where you can use gun depression as well. Like you've got no armor, but so what? Neither does a Barask. Neither does a uh, freaking Sheridan. Neither are any of those tanks. But you have the ability to move your tank. Now it's a 3v4. Not ideal. It was a 3v5 for a split second, but that SU-130 PM, his eyes were bigger than his belly, and he gave it all up just for a shot at a kill. And that's where you got to think about your trades in those situations. There's no way in the world that I'm staying right at the back here. Lovely shot for that to go in. APCR. I just cleared the SU-130 PM. Like I did before, I'm going to rotate around the heavy and I'm going to use his hit point pool. That's what a heavy tank is. It's a big punching bag and you want them to punch the heavy tank while you go and punch their heavy tanks. Using the Hesh there, 421. Tiger 2 is such a strong tank nowadays. He is very keen to see me. That surprised me. Um, man, he drove across in front of our, uh, our heavy and I was like, wow, that's a pretty wild thing to do. I'm going to make some more errors here. Stick around. They'll be happening. Um, this is a silly thing to do. Uh, we got away with it, but that was really dumb. Um, their charioteer has actually gone full circle. Now, I know 
We don't have enough hit points, but you can see me blowing my engine boost. So I know if I don't get back here and help my boy out, we're in big trouble. We're in big trouble. Because that is a legitimate behemoth, that E75. And you can only angle to one tank, and he's got to angle to that tank. Conway's fired. I'm thinking about it. Nope, shouldn't have done it. Shouldn't have done it. Big mistake. Panicking. And then I make the second mistake of paying for the, the present. Like, I put the money in, and then I don't cross. I could have crossed and got an angle on the left on the Scorpion, and I didn't. Even though I already got hit by the E75. That was a huge mistake. I could have gone up there and cleared that Scorpion G. And it would have meant that my heavy had a chance to turn around here. And we could have cleared the E75 together. As it is, he's taken a big hit there from the E75. And he's going to bleed too many hit points. Uh, and they just actually get side shots on him and finish him off. So you can see, it's like a cascading thing. Where... One error will lead into another error will lead into another error. And now I'm like a hundred and something hit points and I've got a Conway. But I know he's just fired. I know it's a big gun. I know it's a long reload. And I'm going to do the old fashioned trade damage for distance. Look for track shots. I've already talked about how important tracking shots are. It's not just that they make them blow, um, blow up easier. It's also because, well, how about that bounce? How about that bounce? Are you kidding me? Are uh, you kidding me? Aim harder, you muppet. Uh, it's because it also makes them blow kits. So if someone has to blow a kit to get rid of a tracking shot and you get an ammo rack damage, I mean, that's a game winner right there. That that means that you can put an extra shot in, then, you know, that's a game winner. The other thing you've got to remember is, look at the clock. There's a minute 32 seconds left. 90 seconds. Uh... I am waiting for him to come to me. I am waiting. I am waiting. But the one advantage I have here is that I know that the Conway is absolutely slow as molasses in turret turning. Right? It does not have a super quick turning turret. And I'm going to push down and set my turret up early for this shot. There he is. I'm looking left. Getting around him. Yeah. Yeah. We took a little bit of a wider angle because we didn't want to get proximity spotted. If you get too close to the Conway there, you're going to pop before the actual visual pops. So if he's looking up the, the gun the gun lane and just waiting to, to move out as you go right next to him, then you're going to get screwed. Anyway, I hope that was good. Blitz boot camp. Let's do more of it. If you like it, leave some ideas in the comments below and uh, share it with all your new buddies. Until next time. Stay safe on the battlefield. Subscribe. Send money. <laughs> we'll bill you. Pushka, <laughs> the human telemachine. Au revoir, amigos.